So a lot of people are talking about Ozempic, which is a GLP-1 agonist. And I made a video in the past explaining Ozempic and why it allows people to lose weight and manage their blood glucose. However, one of the side effects of Ozempic is actually going to be digestive distress. So as I explained in the past, Ozempic is a GLP-1 agonist. GLP-1 is a hormone produced inside of our intestine, and when it binds to different cell types, it will delay gastric emptying, meaning that food will sit inside of our stomach for longer. And the longer food sits in our stomach, the more likely it will be to get... The longer that food sits inside of our stomach, the more likely it will be to be fermented. And when food is fermented by bacteria inside of our stomach, these bacteria actually produce gas as a byproduct. Typically, the only time these bacteria will ferment food is when the bacteria makes it to our large intestine where these bacteria are located. But let's say we take Ozempic immediately before a meal, and when we eat the meal, it severely delays our gastric emptying. We'll then have food sitting inside of our small intestine, which is above the large intestine, and the bacteria can actually migrate up into the small intestine and begin to ferment this food. And there are two issues with this. The first is that it will simply just increase gas production and bloating. But the other is that the small intestine is the location that we absorb nutrients. But when these bacteria migrate into our small intestine, they'll actually compete with our own small intestine for absorption of nutrients. Meaning that this migration of bacteria can cause nutrient deficiencies and once again will increase gas and bloating. Additionally, some of the byproducts produced by these bacteria are alkaline. And this is important because the stomach, which is right above the small intestine, is extremely acidic. And the acidity of the stomach is actually used to digest protein. So when these bacteria begin to ferment food and produce alkaline substances, this can decrease our stomach acid and decrease our ability to absorb protein. And I'm not saying that this is the only reason, but one thing that has been found with GOP-1 medication is that it does cause profound weight gain, but the amount of weight loss seems to come a lot more from muscle protein than normal. And the reason for this could be that we decrease our stomach acid and decrease protein absorption. Additionally, we may decrease the absorption of different micronutrients because of this small intestinal bacteria migration. Therefore, we'll begin to lose weight, but may be losing muscle mass and becoming micronutrient deficient in the process. So there are two important takeaways from this. The first is that if you are taking a GLP-1 medication, you may actually be better off not taking foods that are difficult to digest. These would be things like nuts, seeds, legumes, and difficult to digest vegetables like cruciferous vegetables. So you may actually do extremely well on something called a low FODMAP diet. And this is a diet that's actually centered around reducing the amount of foods that we ingest that the bacteria inside of our intestinal tract are able to ferment. And this is profoundly effective for people with extreme gas and bloating and could be extremely beneficial for someone on a GLP-1 medication. And the other thing I'd recommend is a little bit odd, but instead of eating full meat, try and eat ground meat. So maybe instead of eating steak, having ground beef, and instead of having chicken, having ground turkey. Or you could find yourself a food processor and do this yourself. But I think the other thing that's important to highlight is that we can produce our own natural GLP-1. And the cells that actually produce this GLP-1 are located very close to the large intestine. So for someone not on a GLP-1 medication, I would have the opposite recommendation. I'd actually encourage you to eat a little bit more difficult to digest food because these foods will travel farther down your intestinal tract and make it to the large intestine. They will then interact with the cells that actually produce this GLP-1 and you can get all the effects of the medication by simply eating the correct foods. And what's even more important is that it's not going to cause this bacterial overgrowth because the majority of the food will have already made it extremely far down your intestinal tract, close to the large intestine before it can even cause this GLP-1 upregulation. Meaning there very likely won't be a lot of food left in your small intestine causing these bacteria to migrate. Some helpful tricks would simply be increasing protein intake because protein seems to be a very potent stimulator of GLP-1. And the other would actually be pairing carbohydrates with a fat source because fat will slow down the digestion of carbohydrates. And if you're doing a low carbohydrate protocol, pairing your protein with a fat source because fat will do the same thing for protein. It does seem that monounsaturated fats found in olive oil seem to be a little bit more potent than saturated fat found in butter but I would say that the difference is negligible. And food-based saturated fat found in meat 
will take a little bit more digestion than something like oil or butter, and is much more likely to cause this increase in GLP-1 that we're looking for. And in terms of carbohydrates, we would try to opt once again for a little bit more complex carbohydrates. These would be things like potatoes and fruit, and certain vegetables that you can digest well. And given that you tolerate it, it does seem that fiber has a beneficial impact. Fiber passes through the small intestine undigested, and is actually digested by the bacteria inside of the large intestine. And when these bacteria digest the fiber, they produce what are called short chain fatty acids. And just like the amino acids from the protein we eat, the glucose from the carbohydrates we eat, and the long chain fatty acids from the fat that we eat, these short chain fatty acids can also stimulate GLP-1 production. And this is one of the mechanisms that fiber makes us feel full. With that being said, again, I filmed an entire video on the mechanism of Ozempic and GLP-1. And in this video, I really wanted to focus on the digestive distress that could be caused by GLP-1 medications.